Greetings, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us as we continue our series on practicing His presence. But before we continue, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for each and every person under the sound of my voice who has chosen to join us. As we delve into your word, we thank you that they have given of their life because they've given of their time. And I thank you, Lord, that you will honor it. I also thank you that not one person will leave the same as they came in the name of Jesus. Father, I make myself available to be used by you to meet the needs of your people. I thank you that you will think through my mind, that you will speak through my lips as an oracle and every single action that I perform and word that I speak, may it be pleasing in your sight bringing honor and glory to your kingdom. And I covenant in advance, Lord, to give to you and you alone all of the honor, all of the glory, and all of the praise in the matchless name of Jesus. Amen. Now, the last time we were together, I shared with you, really, basically, it was a story of how God truly rescued my entire family out of a challenge that we were walking through. And I mentioned how we had um, a hospital bill that was in six figures and how the Lord worked it out where we only ended up paying $2,000, not the six figures that we actually owed. We also owed the surgeon in this particular scenario a lot of money as well. And the surgeon, actually sent us a letter forgiving us for any unpaid balance. Now, this story, it had different levels, and I think it's something that offered a lot of encouragement. I'm not going to go through the whole thing because I have so much more that I want to share. So I'm just asking, that was in part two of this series, that please take the opportunity to go back and look at part two so that we will end up exactly where we are going to begin tonight. I think that it will be of some value to you. So in that particular scenario, after going through all of that, I have to add, it's so important that this one story, because believe me, I have so many that I could share, but this one story created another experiential building block on which to stand. I freely shared it with you and it just means so much that I could because it is a form of encouragement and to remind you that I don't give a care what you may be facing. The entire Godhead is working behind the scenes on your behalf. He promised and he is not a man that he should lie. Now it is true that we are not like the initial apostles that followed Christ. They did not have to practice his presence because he physically walked with them along their journey. Guess what? Jesus, along with our Heavenly Father, the Most High God, the Holy Spirit, and the entire Godhead dwell permanently within us. We are really in a much better situation. The major difference is that we have to practice his presence so that Jesus, along with the entire Godhead, become just as real to us as walking alongside us. Now, all of us have our own unique stories to tell. And I want you to take some time, sit down and authentically think about some of the challenges that you have grown through. Take the time to analyze and recognize where the Godhead intervened on your behalf and rescued you. This is a critical exercise so that you can understand every facet of his presence when he, when you actually, when you needed him the most. I really need you to do this. I would almost venture to say, I'm giving it to you as a homework assignment, okay? I really want you to sit down and analyze 
and recognize where the Godhead intervened on your behalf. And the reason why it is so important is because it will help you expect his presence more readily and live in it <laughs> more fully. As Christians, we live in this world even though we are not of it. Without always realizing it, if we, we want everything instantly and seldom take the time to savor the moments in time. If we don't receive an answer to prayer immediately, we feel as if God has let us down or didn't hear us and we get frustrated in the challenge we may be facing. In actuality, that is incorrect and basically immature. We have learned that faith is the currency of the kingdom. We must remember that while operating in faith, there is what? There is seed, time, and harvest. We can get caught up in the atmosphere of the world in which we live and want to simply plant seeds and have an instant harvest. Even from an agricultural standpoint, that cannot happen. We know that you plant seeds and time must elapse before a harvest can be realized. Turn with me to Isaiah, the 40th chapter, and we're going to look at verse 31. It's Isaiah the 40th chapter, and we're going to look at verse 31. If you look at it in the New King James Version, it says, But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. If we look at it in the Amplified, because again, I want us to see the qualifiers. It says, but those who wait for the Lord, here's the qualifier, who expect, look for, and hope in him will gain new strength and renew their power. They will lift up their wings and rise up close to God like eagles rising toward the sun. They will run and not become weary. They will walk and not faint. Now, let's break that down, okay? Because we know those verses of Scripture, but we don't always, again, take the time to break it down. They that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. As we wait, we'll be fortified with renewed strength. We are not being left weakened or destitute or forgotten. Even though God may not be visible to you in a situation, he is invisibly working behind the scenes on your behalf. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. Do you realize that eagles are birds that when the most horrific storms occur, they simply spread their wings and fly above the storm? Let me remind you of something else. Turn with me to Hebrews, and we're going to look at the first chapter and the third verse. Hebrews 1, and we're going to look at the third verse, and I'm going to share it with you out of the Amplified. And it says, The sun is the radiance and only expression of the glory of our awesome God, reflecting God's Shekinah glory, the light being, the brilliant light of the divine, and the exact representation and perfect imprint of his father's essence and upholding and maintaining and propelling all things, the entire physical and spiritual universe by his powerful word, carrying the universe along to its predetermined goal. When he himself and no other had by offering himself on the cross as a sacrifice for sin, accomplished purification from sins and established our freedom from guilt, he sat down, revealing his completed work at the right hand of the majesty on high, revealing his divine authority. Now, turn really quickly over to Ephesians. And we're going to look at the second chapter, verses 4 through 6, and I'm going to share it with you out of the Amplified Classic Edition. This is Ephesians 2 verses 4 through 6. Starting with verse 4, it says, But God, 
so rich is he in his mercy because of and in order to satisfy the great and wonderful and intense love with which he loved us, even when we were dead, slain by our own shortcomings and trespasses, he made us alive together in fellowship and in union with Christ. He gave us the very life of Christ himself, the same new life with which he quickened him, for it is by grace, his favor and mercy, which you did not deserve, that you are saved, delivered from judgment, and made partakers of Christ's salvation. And he raised us up together with him and made us sit down together, giving us joint seating with him in the heavenly sphere by virtue of our being in Christ Jesus, the Messiah, the Anointed One. When you think of it, we are seated in heavenly places with Christ. We know that Christ is seated at the right hand of our Heavenly Father, the Most High God. So, as long as we don't venture out of the throne room, we will be in position to soar above any storm. We will run and not get weary. We will walk and not faint. As you encounter the challenge that you may be growing through, it may seem like you're running a marathon. Not a sprint, but a marathon. Now, if you've ever run a marathon, it is 26.2 miles, and you are putting your body through at norm, abnormal strain. Anybody who ever does that, I should say, not you, but anybody who runs a marathon, that's what they're facing. Now, most people train their bodies for months in preparation for the 26.2 miles, and even then, so many have stories to tell where they thought they might not make it to the finish line. Some actually don't finish. Others may conclude by walking. Please note that 26.2 miles is quite a distance. It is much more than several city blocks. Also note that scripture states, as you wait on the Lord, you will run and not get weary so your endurance remains intact. It also states that you will walk and not faint, and you will get to the finish line. You will be victorious. Nowhere in scripture does it say the battle will be easy. It just lets you know that as long as you exercise your faith, stand strong on the word, you win. It just doesn't get better than that. No matter what, you win. Now, this will happen because God's got you. The entire Godhead is working behind the scenes on your behalf. Remember, Jesus, your high priest, is making intercession for you. Turn with me to Hebrews, and we're going to look at the seventh chapter. And let's look at verses 24 and 25. That's Hebrews, the seventh chapter, verses 24 and 25. If you look at it in the New King James Version, it says, But he, because he continues forever, has an unchangeable priesthood. Therefore, he is also able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him since he always lives to make intercession for them. And if we share it out of the Amplified, because it has a few qualifiers, it says, but on the other hand, Jesus holds his priesthood permanently and without change, because he lives on forever. Therefore, he is able also to save forever, completely, perfectly, for eternity, those who come to God through him since he always lives to intercede and intervene on their behalf with God. Also, let's take a look at, because, yeah, we're going to look at John's gospel, because here Jesus is stating and showing us the job of the Holy Spirit. So let's look at John's gospel, and we're going to look at 
the 14th chapter and the 26th verse. And this is Jesus actually speaking to us. And he says, but the helper, now this is why, again, I like the amplified. Here are the qualifiers, okay? But the helper, who is speaking of, he's speaking of the Holy Spirit, okay? But the helper, comforter, advocate, intercessor, counselor, strengthener, standby, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, in my place, to represent me and act on my behalf. He will teach you all things, and he will help you remember everything that I have told you. Now again, how many things are left out of all? Absolutely nothing. So the Holy Spirit will teach us all things. He will prepare you for all things. All you have to do is listen. That's the key. You have to listen. So the key is that we have to wait on the Lord. Please do not get caught up in this modern day Babylon society that we live, that you forget to trust God with complete confidence and wait for him to orchestrate your victory. I find it quite interesting how we will wait patiently in line at the theater for the opening of a new movie. Living in New York, we will wait in line for a Broadway production. We also have no challenge waiting at a fine restaurant to be seated especially if we didn't make a reservation. We won't mention the fact that we will wait to see the doctor even though we have an appointment. The same holds true for the hair and nail salons or barber shops. We wait for these things without question. However, we don't extend the same consideration to God. Since he sits, still sits on the throne, we want to just snap our fingers and expect instant results. Sometimes, <laughs> I am sure, he must chuckle or outright laugh at some of the challenges we find ourselves in because we may have had a lot to do with their creation. You have to be careful because the current world system with Satan running it can make you stumble if you're not careful. There are many, many Christians, and I'm just going to give an example because there's so many different examples and there's so much to cover. But there are many Christians who run up credit card debt for all kinds of reasons that create a challenge for them in the long run. There are, there are just so many designer bags and shoes and clothes, etc., that one can wear or so many cars that one can drive. Don't get me wrong. I appreciate the finer things made available to us. I enjoy a Prada bag. However, I don't advise having one for each day of the week if it doesn't fit into your budget. Okay? I think some Christians may have missed something in the prosperity message. We have been given the power to get wealth. That's true. We are supposed to have wealth and be prosperous, but there's a reason for that. We are to be a distribution center for the kingdom of God. Our wealth is not designed to make us look like the newest social media sensation. It is amazing to me how many Christians will go into debt trying to imitate what they see others display on social media or television. Now, if you don't spend any time on social media or limited television time, you are still surrounded by billboards, magazines, and even people at church. People must have lots of things and place it under the banner of prosperity, supposedly representing the kingdom. Oftentimes, there is no budget in place to be considered, and they find themselves standing in bankruptcy court. They cry to God to be rescued for something they created themselves. Now God, in his mercy and grace, I'm sure, surely helps them. One of the ways to avoid, to avoid such pitfalls though, and live a life of joy and perfect peace, 
is by practicing his presence. In doing so, it will keep us centered and rescue us from ourselves. Now, how do we do this? We need to start by training ourselves to ask God what he wants us to do. That sounds so simple, right? Hmm. However, I mean, what does he want us to do every second of every minute of every hour in each day? Now, this is accomplished by practice. It may seem as difficult as making a three-point shot or serving an ace in tennis or making a speech in front of thousands of people. On top of that, doing it repeatedly. Obviously, practicing is paramount. Why not start your day greeting the Father and asking him what he would like you to do right now? Practice starting your day in intervals or segments where you are tuning everything else out and just listening to what he wants you to do. I submit to you that I believe this is what Jesus did as he walked the earth. Turn with me. You were in John, so turn with me back to John's Gospel, and we're going to look at the 12th chapter, verses 49 and 50. John's Gospel, the 12th chapter, verses 49 and 50, and... I'm going to share it with you first out of the New King James Version. And I want you to keep in mind that this is Jesus speaking to us in the scripture. And he says, starting with verse 49, For I have not spoken on my own authority, but the Father who sent me gave me a command, what I should say and what I should speak. And I know that his command is everlasting life. Therefore, whatever I speak, just as the Father has told me, so I speak. Now, if we look at it in the Amplified, it says, For I have never spoken on my own initiative or authority, but the Father himself who sent me has given me a commandment regarding what to say and what to speak. I know that his commandment is eternal life. So the things I speak, I speak in accordance with, with his exact instruction, just as the Father has told me. Jesus only spoke what his Father told him, which means what? He had to listen to him to hear his instruction. We are not better than our Lord, so we need to do the same thing. Now, it requires practicing, discipline, and commitment. No different than when you've received your prayer language. Think about that. Speaking with other tongues is what I'm talking about. It took practice to develop it fully, just like any other language. It also felt like praying for one minute was an hour and five minutes a whole day. After practicing, you can pray without ceasing. So when you become more seasoned, you can pray until you get a release, which may take hours at a time. We will talk about that more moving forward. The goal is to become totally sensitive, responsive, obedient, and pliable moment by moment to the will and instruction of the Most High God. I'm going to repeat that. The goal is we want to become totally sensitive, responsive, obedient, and pliable moment by moment to the will and instruction of the Most High God. Just like we know, being born again is amazing because it allows a sinner to be saved. Let's quickly look at Colossians, the first chapter, and we're going to look at verses 13 and 14. This is Colossians, the first chapter, verses, the chapter 1, Colossians 1, 
verses 13 and 14. Looking at it in the New King James Version, it says, He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love, in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. If we look at it in the Amplified, it says, For He has rescued us and has drawn us to Himself from the dominion of darkness and has transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son in whom we have redemption because of his sacrifice resulting in the forgiveness of our sins and the cancellation of sins penalty. We know that being born of the spirit of God is life changing. The next gift available to Christians is to be filled with the spirit overflowing evidence by speaking in other tongues, our own unique prayer language. When we pray in other tongues, we are praying in present tense about the future which has been ordained in the past. Practicing his presence takes us into a greater relationship with the entire Godhead and provides us with a freedom never experienced before. Now, I totally understand that we have busy lives, especially if you are working full time and have a family or maybe you're retired and your days are filled with all of those many activities that you couldn't do before. However, we must learn that as children of the Most High God, we have a duty to show our devotion to him. We need to spend time seeking his face, not just what is in his hand for us. Turn with me to the book of Romans, the eighth chapter, and we're going to look at verses 15 and 16. Romans, the eighth chapter, verses 15 and 16. I'm going to share it with you out of the Amplified first, and it says, for you have not received a spirit of slavery leading again to fear of God's judgment, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons, the spirit producing sonship by which we joyfully cry, Abba, Father. The spirit himself testifies and confirms together with our spirit, assuring us that we believers are children of God. If we look at it in the Living Bible, it says, and so we should not so, excuse me, and so we should not be like cringing, fearful slaves, but we should behave like God's very own children adopted into the bosom of his family and calling to him, Father, Father, for his Holy Spirit speaks to us deep in our hearts and tells us that we really are God's children. When you spend time with God and seek his face, you will find all <laughs> that you have longed for. Again, nothing is left out of all. He designed you to yearn for time with him. You never ever have to feel guilty when you push other things or people aside just to bask in his presence. You will find to follow him with your whole heart. You will have to relinquish your desire to please other people. However, as you nurture your relationship with him, your light will shine brightly in this dark world and you will become a blessing to others. That's so important because the world truly, truly needs it. Turn with me to the book of Psalms, and we're going to look at chapter 42, and we're going to look at verses 1 and 2. Psalms 42, verses 1 and 2. In the Amplified Classic Edition, verse 1 says, as the heart, now heart in this particular instance means a male deer, okay? So we're used to sit hearing deer pants after the water. So this just means it's a male deer. Pants and longs for the water, brooks. So I pant and long for you, O God. My inner self thirsts for God, for the living God, 
when shall I come and behold the face of God? And if we look at it in the Living Bible, it says, As the deer pants for the water, so I long for you, O God. I thirst for God, the living God. Where can I find him to come and stand before him? Also turn with me to Philippians, and we're going to look at the second chapter and the 15th verse. And I'm going to share it with you out of the Living Bible. And it says, So that no one can speak a word of blame against you, you are to live clean, innocent lives as children of God in a dark world full of people who are crooked and stubborn. Shine out like, shine out among them like beacon lights. And if we look at it in the Amplified Classic Edition, it says, that you may show yourselves to be blameless and guileless, innocent and uncontaminated children of God without blemish, faultless, unrebukable, in the midst of a crooked and wicked generation, spiritually perverted and perverse, among whom you are seen as bright lights, stars or beacons shining out clearly in the dark world. Praise God. That is definitely how we want to be seen. And I have to quit because I'm out of time. I look forward to joining me next week because we're going to start exploring some of the benefits and how it truly affects us in practicing his presence. But until then, know that I love you with the love of the Lord. And always, always remember that God still sits on the throne. The enemy has already been defeated. Jesus is Lord. And wherever you are, God is. Thanks for joining us. Our hope is that you received something that you can apply to your life, strengthen your faith. At Crenshaw Christian Center, New York, we believe that the Word of God is practical for everyday application. If you'd like to support the ministry with your tithe and offering, you can mail them to Crenshaw Christian Center, New York, 450 7th Avenue, Suite 2111, New York, New York, 10123. We now offer the convenience of text and online giving, one of the most secure ways to give. Try it now. Simply text East G from your smartphone to 28950 and follow the prompts. You can even specify a designation for your gift. Text East G for general donation, East T for tithe, or East O for offering. Each transaction needs to be its own individual text message. You can also visit our website, BrentrawChristianCenterEast.org, and click the Give tab to begin your experience. Set up recurring donations or give one-time gifts. This experience is easy to use, secure, and requires a one-time registration only. Giving the second time is even easier. Simply text East G to 28950 with all your information securely stored. We appreciate your continued support and stand in agreement with you for the manifold return in your life. Thanks again for watching. And remember, we walk by faith, not by sight. We would like you, our viewers and partners, to join us in honoring the legacy of the Apostle by making a donation to the Apostle Frederick K.C. Price Library. The library will be on the grounds of the Faith Dome in Los Angeles, California, and it will be open to the public. It will be a place of study, learning, and research, available for anyone desiring to further their knowledge and understanding of the Christian faith. Visitors will also have a chance to learn more about our founder and his impact on the body of Christ and the world at large. You can mail your donations to Crenshaw Christian Center, New York, 450 7th Avenue, Suite 2111, New York, New York, 10123. If you are giving by check, be sure to designate in the memo area, Apostles Library. If you have Crenshaw Christian Center envelopes, you can mark AL on the envelope. You can also donate via your smartphone by texting EAST AL to 28950 and follow the prompts. We thank you in advance for your support. And as always, we stand in agreement for the manifold return in your life.